Hello, everybody. This is Tim Blanchett with Divorce661.com. Today, we're talking with Susan Gold. Susan Gold wrote a book, Toxic Family, Transforming Childhood Trauma into Adult Freedom. Um, today, we're going to be talking about narcissism and divorce, tools to divorce a narcissist. We're going to talk about what is narcissism, how to maybe spot one before uh, marrying one. And what to do if your spouse is a narcissist, and then some tools again to divorce a narcissist. So, if um, based on that, uh, Susan, if you could just give us a little bit more uh, about yourself, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, sure, Tim. So, first, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for producing the content that you are. It takes a lot of effort and energy and research and preparation. So thank you. No, I um, thank you for saying that. And I'm so excited. I skipped right over to have you because this is not my area of expertise. Um, I hear that word a lot in, in what I do. And I did, did some research before this to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. But it's, I don't want to say it's fascinating in a good way, but it just it is, is a fascinating I don't know that I even know a single narcissist. Is that is that possible? But anyways, go go back to uh, introducing yourself and we'll get into it. Well, just, I want to say I relate to your experience. And I also want to express that this is all my own personal experience. I don't have letters behind my name, but I have done my homework and I have lived through hmm. the experience yeah. of one whom I believe um, was a narcissist. And it started early for me. I grew up in a toxic family system. It, it was um, hurt and abused children, raising hurt and abused children. And it mm. was deep in the lineage. And I have profound respect for my parents and my family. And I believe that I've been benefited as a result of being incarnated into the family that I was. But I, I have to say, I left the morning after I graduated from high school and I carried with me a lot of trauma that mm. needed to be transformed. And I will say that I see the man who would become my ex-husband as one of my greatest gurus, one of my greatest teachers. It was almost as if it was a perfect storm. So many elements came together. So many missing links all linked up going through the experience of my divorce, though I don't wish it on anyone else. How do you mean that it linked, that it linked up? You connected the dots? I, I didn't quite understand that. So since second grade and Billy Fritz on the playground, I've had to have some kind of male attention to feel like I'm okay, mm. that I have value, that I have worth, that I have some sense of self-esteem. And that has been very costly because I may have picked from the lowest hanging fruit mm. when it came to relationships and partnering. And it wasn't just personally, it was professionally as well. Wow. So I was like a shining magnet, a shining light um, for narcissistic abuse. Are, and is that pretty common that someone that has circumstances like yours that will find people that way? Is it, is it you finding them or are they the narcissist attracted to you? Is that a fair I think, question? I think it's opposites attracting. Ah. So most narcissists will attract a personality who is empathic. And this does happen with men, but mostly it's women because we've been programmed to be caretakers, to put others before ourselves, or at least I was, you know, being yeah. raised in the family that I was. Um, and we want to give, and there's also, there tends to be codependency, but I have to say that in general, it's a very successful professionals that are drawn into these relationships. Hmm. And, um, when I first met my husband, I thought I met Pr Prince Charming. I thought I met the man of my dreams. Finally, <laughs> someone I could completely relate to right. and was appreciative of my being. And they do something called love bombing, um, which is just make you feel spectacularly 
special mm -hmm. um, in the beginning. And is it is it something they do intentionally or just because they fall into this category of being a narcissist? What I've learned about narcissists is they create a false persona. And it's really an illness that is um, spiritual and emotional. So they, they were not, there was some kind of trauma. They did not feel whole and they created a false personality and then they thrive off the energy of others. So it doesn't matter if the attention is positive or it's negative. They just need what's called a source of supply to feel alive. Interesting. So if, if opposites attract in that way, I didn't know we'd be going down this road, but it's so fascinating. If opposites attract in that way, are, are there ways to identify it or is it, is it just there, there is that magnetism because of the two, the two different um, ways people are thinking? I think there are definitely red flags. At least I can name a few from my own personal experience. Generally, there's a love bombing. So there's incredible attention. They have your favorite drink. They know your song. They, they know how to flatter you. They know how to switch the dynamic and take the focus, distraction, take the focus off. And it's all beauty and grace in the beginning. And then it becomes more, it's me against you. Hmm. And it's, I need to fend for myself. And I don't care at what cost. And it's often gaslighting. Um, so it's, it's very, it's very hard to see. But once you've truly experienced it, and truly understand the dynamic, it is possible. I mean, after, after the divorce was final, I went seven years by choice without, I had one date mm -hmm. and it was a big flashy Academy Award winning director and Emmy winning producer and had all the material bells and whistles. But the day of the date came, came and he said, you know, do you think you could drive over to my house and we'll go to the West side together? And I was like, big red flag. First mm. date, can't drive 10 minutes to pick me up. Yeah. Mm -mm. This isn't going beyond this conversation tonight. Yeah. And, you know, I'll follow through. So you start to learn what the signs are. And for me within the relationship, I was being, I felt like I was being sucked dry. My life was getting smaller. I was taking I took a night job at one point to pay the bills. Um, I was doing all the, the household work. I cried when my partner, my husband, went to the paint store with me towards the end of the relationship because I was carrying the weight while he yeah. sat at his computer and wrote while it was convenient. Yeah. Did, in, in your case, did the narcissism come out during the initial relationship or after you were married? So there were certainly flags that I chose to ignore because I wanted that attention. I wanted a partnership. I wanted to feel whole and I didn't not being in one. I wasn't strong enough yet. And it was odd yeah. because professionally I was very put together and my friends all said, you're so powerful. You're so strong. You're so independent. But I didn't feel like that at all. Inside, I was a crumbling mess. Isn't there a saying to that effect of, of sorts that the, the, the strongest people need the most support? Something I, I know I'm not doing, I'm not getting that exact, but the folks that, uh, that, that seem the most together, you know, need the most support. I certainly understand that as a, as a codependent or one with codependent tendencies. Mm. And before I went through this experience, I absolutely would agree with that. I mean, I did most everything on my own. It came from as a child, I was expected to step up and I had a lot of chores to do at six that most wouldn't handle until mm. they were in their teens. Mm. So I learned early how to, 
get heavy tasks done quietly, not to make any kind of fuss or commotion or be too needy in any way and keep it to myself. Gotcha. So there was, uh, you had mentioned, we were talking about some of the signs. Um, love bombing was one. Um, not taking the time to to meet your date, as you said. Um, anything <laughs> else that you can think of that would be something someone could spot? Um, well, in, in, the, in, in the beginning, Tim, they're like no. a dream. They're like your... An absolute, oh my gosh, I've been waiting this for this forever because they and they learn your behaviors. Hmm. They milk you for information that ca they can then later use against you. But in the beginning, it's just, oh my gosh, it's intoxicating hmm. the attention. Well, it seems and then too it's good to be true, maybe yeah. that might be a warning yeah. sign. Yeah, hmm. it could, it could be, it, it could be, and it usually happens fast. And um, things go quickly and then things start falling apart. Um, but I didn't see it in my marriage until after we had a child. So we had a son and that added weight. So that helped me magnify the behaviors going on. You know, I would be carrying seven bags of groceries that I bought from parking on the street while he right. parked in the driveway. I had an office outside of the home while he had the second bedroom to his house inside the home. You know, there were a lot of just incongruent behaviors and I didn't feel like I could address them because it would be twisted. So if you, that spiritual axiom, you point one finger out, three fingers come back. Hmm. When you're an empath and you're in a narcissistic relationship, that spiritual axiom can be deadly for you because you'll continue to dig deep. Why can't, why am I being stingy? Why can't I be more giving? Why don't I have more compassion? And how are those, why, why do, why are those feelings you would have when you, you're, you're, you're knowingly carrying the load? Why would you have those feelings? Yeah, is it because of you had mentioned gaslighting? Is it because of, of it, that yeah, on? just the, just the dynamic of yeah. the narcissist and their expectation? They don't live in a real construct. They live in a false construct. They have no idea the effects of their behavior and their actions. So yeah, and so it's not intentional per se of the narcissist to behave this way, you're saying that there, there was something that may have happened to them as well, that to, to fall into this way of being. Oh, there absolutely was something that, that inflicted this dynamic internally. However, it, it, when they feel threatened, it becomes a manipulation and it becomes I'm going to survive and I don't care what happens to you and I don't care what happens to any others. So ultimately in my own relationship, I knew the expiration date was up on my marriage. Mm. I didn't understand the dynamic of narcissists. Yeah. I actually ended up Googling that word and that led me to uncover the, the marriage that I was in. I didn't uh, understand it. I thought you had it was to see it on, you had to see it to identify it. Yeah, absolutely. And then I tried to make him accountable. So I suggested mediation to create a post-nuptial agreement to uh -huh. which he agreed. And he was all fine until we got to the last point and he crossed his arms and his eyes went into those cold lizard like slits. And he said, mm. I'm hiring an attorney and I'm filing for divorce. And that little intuitive voice that's inside most of us said to me, this is the universe doing for you what you mm. cannot do for yourself. And that's when all hell ensued. I mean, mm. he refused to leave the master bedroom, refused to leave the home that I had purchased for our family um, and had maintained. Um, and I took a mattress and into the floor of a partial conversion in our garage. And I lived for one year wow. in that circumstance, 
holding no contact because that is the only way to get, extricate yourself from a narcissistic relationship. And certainly while you're going through a divorce and after, if you have shared custody of a child, because they, they are masters of manipulation and you will never win. So if I understood you correctly, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong in interpreting this, that they are doing something happened in their past. And this, this is a behavior that, that wins for them or they, they adopt, but it seems like it, May it be un, they may be doing it unknowingly at one point, but that it does go into a purposeful manipulation. Would that be accurate? That is accurate according to my experience and according to the research okay. that I've done. Okay, absolutely. And so they they are always going to be the victim. Always, they can yeah. they cannot step up and accept responsibility. And if they do, it's a ruse to get them to the next rock. Interesting. You had mentioned that it, it happens fast going back, starting with the love bombing and then, and then it can, are we talking, I don't know if there's even, maybe it's just from your own experience, but are we talking weeks, months, years, or is it, is it done in a specific time? Um, like no, I think it's, time? I think it's, I think it's specific to each individual oh, relationship. Sure. Okay. It it took um, us a long time to commit to marriage. Um, but one of the other traits is use, abuse, and then discard. And that's exactly what happened in my marriage. After 15 years of marriage and then the year it took for the divorce, I was able to write him the six-figure check. And he went on to his next source of supply mm. and married fairly soon after because he learned in the state of California, what he was entitled to as part of a marriage, especially a long-term marriage. Whereas with me, he was very hesitant to sign on the dotted line. <laughs> yeah. So I think the next thing we could talk about, we, we talked about kind of, we defined it, maybe how to spot one, um, how to, how to, to know if, if it's happening to you. Um, now we're talking more about the divorce side of things. In, in, in your experience, and we're talking about a bit of that about having you know having to, to to be in the converted garage and whatnot. What what were some of those other tools that it sounds like the that divorce process was, was at least a year if I was listening properly. Um, what tools and you said I think you said disassociate or or completely extricate or separate yourself. I forget what word you used. What other tools are there that you can use to to get through a divorce of a narcissist? And what what kind of things came up that people you know should expect? It's a very painful process, and many people don't make it out because in, in what they, way they they cannot get themselves out of the relationship because the the narcissist is hypnotic and through manipulation likes to keep their sources of supply hooked in. So if you're not strong enough to stand up and hold no contact, which is excruciatingly painful. I mean, this is someone that I poured years into and I had love for and couldn't believe when I saw his mask fall, who he was. And then you keep wanting to make that person accountable. Can't they see what they're doing? Can't they see what they're doing to their own child? No, they can't. And no, they won't. Their concern is themselves. And that's a very difficult understanding to get into the cells of your being. And if I did not have training as an endurance athlete, if I wasn't a longtime meditator where I would go weeks at a time in silence, holding no contact, it would have been a lot harder to get through what I did. It was really important for me to get support. Remember, we're in the same, I won't even call it a home, a domicile. Yeah. So it, it took every ounce of all that I had learned, all my years of therapy. And what really worked were more somatic modalities of therapy. Talk therapy was really important for me to get the story down, mm -hmm. but ultimately it led me full circle to the same point where I had started and it served to re-traumatize me. What worked were more somatic forms. So I held trauma and still do in my body. 
And I had to go inside and see where that trauma was. What color was it? What was the substance? Is Does it feel current? Does it feel past? Does it feel ancient? And literally clear that trauma out of my body and replace it with light. That's what really worked for me. Gotcha. What what things did you experience in in the divorce of a narcissist that would be different, perhaps from a normal, if there's such a thing, divorce? Like what what yeah. tricks were used, or what were any specific manipulations that happened in maybe you know working out a better financial deal or using pressures to. So, you, you know, there's a better deal for him, or, you know, what, what were the things like that that happened? So I'm going to tell you the blatant truth. You need to get out. If you are in a marriage with a narcissist, you need to get out. So I had to surrender to that. And my even my attorney said, you're making a bad deal. And I said, you don't understand. I need to get out. This man will drain me. I did not fight custody. Custody was always 50-50, even though I was really terrified. I knew not to fight because we would just hemorrhage money. Yeah. I was hemorrhaging money as it was. I, I would be hysterical in the middle of the night waking up to, to one of the attorney's bills. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they don't understand. And I did not answer any of the rattled emails of my spouse. I used one sentence responses. Yeah. Please check with your attorney. Please check with your son. You know, I yeah. did not engage and it took every bit of restraint of pen and tongue and it felt heavy handed and I felt victimized and I felt abused, but I had to drop it and look towards the end result, which was literally freedom. And people, to, I've talked to so many people that are, it's four years and they're not divorced. I had a cousin who two years later, and the uh, another thing they will do is turn friends and family members against you with character assassination. Mm. So I had an uncle, the only uncle and only family, family member on the West Coast. We were really close. And I saw my husband starting the manipulation even before we were in mediation. I saw mm. what was happening. And they sided with him. And I had to say, okay, they side with him. I know my truth. And yeah. then two years later, my uncle's daughter, my cousin, found herself going through an, uh, a similar situation. And ultimately, he said to her, do what Susan did. It worked. It's so, you know, and I, I'm, I'm realizing now as you're talking through these things, I'm thinking back why I have, this is fairly new to me and, and, I don't have experience in dealing with clients like that because I have, I have very strict protocols for the folks we work with since we only handle, you know, amicable divorce cases. And we do a lot of consultations where, you know, I'll say, uh, you know, we're not going to be the best option for you because sometimes they'll use the word, you know, he's a narcissist. Sometimes they will describe the circumstances of a narcissist and, all of those things, and I'm, I'm looking at some some notes here. All of those things and everything you've just brought up are all things that will prevent those folks using a service like mine because it will not be amicable because of the manipulation and all of the tricks that in their tool bag that they use, you know, to to gain favor or get a better deal. And I hear that in the conversations I'm having with them, and they never become clients because it's just, it's obviously not something that we're capable of handling or want to handle. But I do hear them say, I just want out and that they're willing to give up almost everything just, just to get out. And I guess either that was their origination or due to the pressures being applied that they were just giving, I don't know you say giving in, but that's how bad they want out. Just, they don't, they can have all the assets, you know, yes, I should have alimony, but I don't want it. I just, you know, I, he, he wins. I give it, I give in and I want out and they're willing to give up quite a bit of financial, you know, gain that, you know, in the divorce that uh, otherwise they would have got. And, but to your point at what cost in, in attorney's fees, because that 
you know, that's just would continue and continue. And it does. I've, I have a friend who's seven years in and out of court for custody issues and she continues to engage. And that's the red flag. You cannot yeah. engage. You cannot. And I, I will can... say that I had miracles come through. I made one of the biggest mm. deals in my career going through that process. Once I wrote him his check and he left that, that little monastery I created in the garage, actually I had it uh, redesigned into an income suite, paid half my mortgage taxes and insurance. Yeah. Nice. And my son and I were able to stay in our home. He was able to stay in his school system and I had time to heal and I broke the addiction the codependency. So yeah. I have so much to be grateful for, but it is not, it's not easy. And a lot of attorneys don't see it. They think they understand the dynamic, but it's very hard to see through. Yeah. You know, I've had, I've had friends come to me after years after saying, we didn't understand at the time we get it now. Friends of yours or uh, mm -hmm. attorney. Yeah. Yeah. Cause they're, they're not, they're not seeing it. They're, they're being manipulated as well, perhaps, right? You're, you're saying uh, character assassination and whatnot. So that can be done at various levels, intentional or just in, in a, a gaslighting setting. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was, I had compassion. He was absolutely doing the best he could. He was fighting for his survival. I understand and I have compassion for him. And I guess that's how you have to look at it to kind of, for lack of a better word, get your, your power back, you know, take just yeah. basically taking ownership. And I'm, I'm talking, not, this is not my expertise, but I know in, you know, if you, if you blame someone for something, it, they're always going to have um, some power over you. But if you say, hey, you know, I, I, I accept responsibility for this to whatever degree, and then, and it's just a testament that you know things are happening good after you wrote that check that it, not only is your marriage but it's your entire life professional and otherwise that's affected by this relationship it, it, my life was getting smaller and smaller my accounts my clients were getting less and less it was harder and harder to make deals and then i cleaned this up and the universe totally took care of me i started getting retainer clients i had less less stress less pressure but I had to be really brave to step up to it. And yes, forgiveness is imperative. Engagement is not, but forgiveness is in my experience. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at what we talked about. I'm looking at my notes and it, I think you just drilled down on everything that, I, that I'm showing as, as far as narcissistic traits, lack of empathy, self-centeredness, manipulation and control, difficulty, with int intimacy and emotional connection, constant need for validation, high conflict and defensiveness. I mean, that th this was a, uh, what would you call it? A perfect, uh, your, your former spouse was a perfect example of all of the above. And that's, that's to my benefit. I had a true education that I'm grateful for, and now I can help others with my experience, which I'm, I'm happy to do. You had the full the full spectrum. It just it wasn't one or two of however many traits <laughs> are there. It was the whole the whole gamut. I have to say, in writing my book, um, I think the the divorce phase probably is chapter twelve, and the uh, publisher sent me the galley, so I had to read through it a final time. And after that chapter, I went, "Wow, that woman's powerful. She's really strong." And I was like, "That's you." <laughs> Let's talk about your book. I uh, I grabbed a little shot of it here. Um, tell us tell us a little bit about the book. Um, so I didn't want to write the book, Tim. I went kicking and screaming. I think an Irish seer told me in 2007 I had a book to write. But I've had a lot of incredible experience, and I've had a lot of success in my professional career and personally. Um, and so uh, finally, I surrendered and. Um, wrote it all down. And I was a bulldog producer. I'd sit at the computer for 15 minutes a day, whether I had something to write or not to come up with a first pass, but I didn't feel very connected to it. So a friend said, why don't you go back and take a pass from little Susie's point of view, that little being inside your heart that's mm. 
witnessed and walked through all of it. And though the manuscript and the content didn't change that much, my connection to it did. And that's when I really saw how all my life pieces really provided an incredible tapestry and how grateful I am to have had the players in my movie, whether they were challengers or challenges, yeah. that this has all served me in soul evolution. And I am so content. I don't need <laughs> the things I used to need, including, you know, triathlons and marathons and national rankings and relationships and this and that to feel whole any longer. Mm -hmm. And that's a true gift of this trajectory. Um, and I also put in the appendix actual exercises that help me walk through um, some of the things that I've faced. And it's it's helping people from what I understand. So that's that's the best benefit. Who, who would benefit, speaking of, of that, who, who would benefit from reading your book? So it's all different types of people. If you feel maybe you you came from a challenging upbringing and don't understand why things aren't really working in your adult life, or you've had issues with addiction or clinical depression, you're, you're an entrepreneur and you want to live your dreams, but you don't really know why they're not coming together. You're, you're in a marriage that feels draining and don't understand why. There's, there's a lot of people that, that may be interested in a book like this. Is it a book that um, you need to read cover to cover or because it covers so many different topics, you can find the section perhaps that would be appropriate? Yeah. And and you can go right to the tools like in that. the workbook too. Yeah. Ah. You, the, the story is great and I'm really glad I put it together, but I really wanted some kind of experiential element for any reader so they could yeah. heal too. Is it... Was it therapeutic to write the book in a way? And and I'm, it's interesting that um, you had said you saw the the uh, video or uh, interview I did with Patty. Um, it seems like so many women have gone through divorce are are more than happy to I don't want to say relive the what they went through, but are very open about it. Uh, you very much like Patty to talk about their divorce and talk about their traumas and talk about all this. Is it, is that therapeutic? Is that, or is it, for me, it's like, if I went through something like that, I would, and maybe this is the wrong thing to do, but bury it, never talk about it. Right. That's probably um, not, not the right action, but I'm just curious about that. So a piece of me would like to bury it. A piece of me wanted to keep everything in the compartments I constructed and, and keep it pretty and packaged. But I knew there, there are a lot of people that are suffering and they may not know why. And I may be an impetus for them to understand why they're suffering or why they're in pain or why they're feeling drained or something's not right. And so that's why I really want to share. I mean, even before our recording this morning, yeah. I was like, oh, do I want to bring this back out in the open? Can I do this today? Uh, yeah. And the answer is yes, I can. <laughs> but I have a I have a very unique perspective. Yeah. First, sure. I was I was willing to to step up and to stand up to it and not step down. And that takes a, a tremendous amount of of will and strength, internal strength. But also now I'm not willing to hold on to anger and rage and victimhood. That's not where I'm coming from. And that will not serve me as it will not serve others. So that I, I feel so blessed to have that kind of opportunity to have this conversation with you and to, to write the book that I did. Yeah. I think, and I'm really happy to have had you on because this is not an area of expertise for me. And I know that this is a uh, pretty pervasive, you know, in our civilization. And if even, even with all the videos and things I do, um, and I'm sure you, you've done many as well. It, my goal is if just one person benefited from watching this or even one piece of information helped them in their lives, I think that it was, it's well worth the time spent doing that. So I really appreciate you coming on and 
talking about your life and, and your process and explaining to me and whoever listens about narcissism spe- specifically in, in relationships and in marriage and in divorce. So uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we close this out? And again, thank you so much for your time. Well, thanks for having me and thanks for the forum and thanks for the conversation. If someone feels drawn and they want more information, just go to susangold.us. It's all there, susangold.us. And I'm happy to share with you. That's great. Hang out for just a second and I'll, I'll end this off. Thanks so much.